Our call to worship this morning is responsive and the words are on the screen. Make us to know your ways, O God. Teach us to know your paths, O Jesus. Guide us into your truth, O Spirit. Show us the way to your cross of love. People of God, draw near. Give thanks to the Lord for the God's steadfast love endures forever. We come to offer thanksgiving and praise to tell of God's deeds with songs of joy. Come, let us worship God. Let us sing together. To God be the glory, great things he has done. Let us come together in prayer of adoration and confession. Let us pray. Amazing God, how great is your love in all the earth. Like rays of sunshine, you pour out your love upon all creation, offering life and sustaining hope for the future. We give thanks for the growth in our lives as we soak up this love. Let it truly begin to work on us, that we might truly believe in the possibility of new life in you. For the gifts of life and love, we give thanks. 
For the gifts of growth and hope, we give thanks. For the gifts of wisdom and understanding, we give thanks. Gracious and forgiving God, we come in confession before you, feeling vulnerable and unsure. Yet we come trusting in the promise of your love. Sometimes we prefer the false shelter of darkness. We believe being there in the dark, we do not need to face our fears, or our faults and our shortcomings. Yet in the dark, we cannot grow, we cannot change. We do not even really know ourselves. Bring us into the fullness of your light, held in your love as we begin to own who we are. Even the light can be difficult. We do not always like things about ourselves and discovering the root of our faults can be difficult. Journey with us as life in the light unfolds. Help us when we stumble and fall. And guide us when we feel lost and unsure. In the stillness, may we open ourselves to the light of Christ, whose way is love. Now hear these words of assurance. The presence of Christ goes before us, behind us, beside us. We are never alone. God does not abandon us. We are set free to live in the light of Christ. As we hear the word of grace, your sins are forgiven. Thanks, be, thanks to be to God. Friends, the peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. And the peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Um, our notices and sharing this morning. It's just a reminder that after a service today, we have the congregational meeting and annual reports are available in the foyer if you haven't already picked one up or you haven't read it online. We continue with our Lenten studies. Um, uh, we're in study five this week, so we've only got a couple to go, but if you feel like coming, we would love you to come along either Tuesday or Wednesday. They're the times are on the, in the newsletter. And we are commencing our women's breakfast catch up uh, on Saturday, the 27th of March. Um, so at nine o'clock, we have to be at Boots. And if you could just let uh, either Jean Sheriff know or Jan McKeegan know uh, that you'd like to join us, that would be great. And uh, just a reminder that the uh, cupboard is bare for Neighbours Place. Um, we please, um, there are lots of people in the, doing it tough due to the, what's happened in the past 12 months. So if you've got a spare tin of this or a packet of that, please bring it along and uh, put it in the basket. <coughs> Dad's Army are going to have a... Um, garage sale on the 24th of April and um, David uh, Bunton is in charge of this so if you've got anything you need to get picked up or brought to him please let him know and we do have morning tea this evening this morning this evening this morning <laughs> I don't know what day it is okay uh, yes so we ask you to come into the uh, hall afterwards and yes there's some chockies on the table for um, we I saw them this morning I was said to Liz I was laying in bed last night I thought oh I'd love a piece of chocolate right now 
<laughs> here she is with this big basket of it this morning, so I'll be first there. Thank you. Praise the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Uh, the things you think of when you're in bed, hey, chocolate. <laughs> That's a typical Lent thought, maybe, chocolate. Um, just the uh, added thing to the Lenten studies, which I have really enjoyed and have very... Uh, encouraged to see so many people involved in it um, there are two weeks left and there is a like a online pdf version that you can receive if you want to be part of the last couple of weeks easter is coming quickly very quickly i'm going to teach you uh, a new song in just a tick which we're going to sing proper after we've reflected on the word today um, and i'm trying to keep the service short um, I told a few people I'm not very good at that, but I'll see how we go. Um, but I did want to ask you just very quickly, there's a little bit of a theme of light today. It is Sunday, by the way, Judy. Um, have you ever been in a situation where it's been complete darkness? A yes? Can you give me an example? Um, the caves in Catherine. Caves in Catherine. My story is similar to that. In a old, in a coal mine, an old coal mine down at Wanthaggy, we went down. You go down. I think you still can have tours down. And at one stage, he did that. The, the guy turned off the lights, and oh my goodness, it's like I can't see anything. Anyone else has got an example? Yeah. Ooh, solitary cell at Port Arthur. Were you there at night, or was that just in the day? Still, Still dark. Okay, Jean. There's another four caves, so it's Nolan Cave. Yeah. There was a storm going through the caves, and I went out. Oh, don't panic. <laughs> <laughs> ah, phones. <laughs> There is something frightening. And it doesn't take much light for your eyes to adjust and start to see things in what you think is darkness. But unless it's complete darkness, you do start to see again. It doesn't take much light. You begin to find your way. And you can adjust. So even the smallest amount of light is helpful. We are a people who are drawn to the light of God that shines. So I wanted to just, first of all, teach you this song, and we'll sing it a little bit later. And it's called Drawn to Light. Oh, thanks for that, Robert. You didn't know I was going to do that. That's very nice of you. <laughs> um, I'll just sing it, and you can sing along if you want, but this is really just a teacher, to, to teach you one. <clears throat> people who walk in darkness have sought a light in the heart of the darkest night just when we thought all would be lost we were drawn to the light of God dawn is inside gone is the night drawn to the light and the morning glorious and bright oh what a sight to be drawn to the light of god when i give that a go just leave it there people who walked in darkness have sought a light in the heart of the darkest night just when we thought all would be lost we were drawn to the light of god dawn is inside Gone is the night, drawn to the light and the morning. 
glorious and bright Oh, what a sight to be drawn to the light of God Very good Let's hear our word from Scripture this morning You'll all be very pleased to learn I am not going to sing it. Otherwise, you would all go home. Our first reading is from Ephesians. I'm reading from chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live, when you followed the ways of this world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not by works, so that no one can boast, for we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. And then from the Gospel of John, and I'll read from chapter 3, verses 14 to 21. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people loved darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that they have done, that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. And this is the word of the, the word of the Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In both our readings today, we encounter a classic biblical tension, a living tension, or perhaps a creative tension, between faith and works, between belief and action, between grace and an effort. As disciples of Jesus, we are called to life in its fullest abundance and we are called to follow the way of our Lord. We are called, as the Lenten study has often danced around, to talk the walk and walk the talk. 
our words, our beliefs, our thoughts, matching our effort, our works, our deeds. In the gospel and the epistle, words and deeds speak as complementary partners to one another in witnessing to the world of God's love that brings light and hope, peace and grace. It's a transforming ministry of God's love. It's a loving intention for all of us, all creation. And it's fundamentally true in the gospel message of Jesus where we see his words and deeds, his faith and his efforts because he spoke with unheard of authority and he acted in ways that broke down walls and he brought healing to people in all works, walks of life, from the top rung to the bottom rung of society. In fact, he overturned it all in his words and his deed. And it's also true to be true of us who seek to follow his way, that our words and our deeds will be complementary. They will match one another. There will be an integrity between the two. Our reading today from John sits within the story of Jesus' meeting with Nicodemus. You might recall the story where this leading Pharisee cautiously approaches Jesus at night so as not to be seen by other people. And he asks him many questions. And Jesus responds with his own questions and sort of strange talk of being born again seemingly suggesting the impossible to Nicodemus, pointing really to the rebirth in spirit and heart. And Nicodemus struggles to understand, how can this be, he says? It's a sincere struggle. And I think if any of us met Jesus today face to face, we'd probably end up struggling And Jesus says, you're a teacher of Israel and yet you don't understand these things. Jesus is speaking to Nicodemus the things that really matter, the things that are about fullness of life in God. It starts with the familiar earthly birth but leads to the unfamiliar to Nicodemus, a spiritual rebirth. Jesus is coaxing, teaching, guiding Nicodemus into a new way, a new understanding and a new way of life. I like the word coaxing. He's just helping him along. And eventually Jesus says a verse which is so familiar to many of us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. So many, John 3.16, so many people could quote it, but it sits within this story of Nicodemus. It's part of Jesus' unfolding answer. And we're told that, in essence, Jesus is a gift to the world and that it's a gift-giving God who gives it And it's a saving activity of God. That the Jesus of the cross, raised up like the snake of the story in Numbers 21, that the Jesus of the cross raised up will be a means for a way to unfold for people to new life. A renewed journey, a renewed spirit born again. The journey will be like, says John, this reading we've had, a journey from darkness to light, from a seeming darkness or hiddenness that is almost like a death to the openness of light that leads to renewed life and hope. This raising up is like the light on a lampstand 
not hidden anymore, but shining for the whole room to be lit up. And we said before, it doesn't take much light to start to light the room. You and I, we can catch glimpses of this light of God. It should not, it cannot be hidden. I started thinking about lighthouses. It's a bit dumb to hide a lighthouse. You need it in the most prominent position and it shines forth. And just the littlest bit of light from a lighthouse can save a ship from sinking. It has been that for a long time. One of the earliest things that that colonisers to Australia did was build lighthouses for navigation. It needs to be visual. It guides, it saves this light of God. This is the journey of Nicodemus. Even though we catch only glimpses of him, it starts here with his conversation with Jesus. You might know it ends with Nicodemus being one of the brave souls that publicly steps up to say, I will bury the body. He's come a long way. And in between is this episode in chapter 7 of John where Nicodemus almost defends Jesus as his fellow Pharisees work out what to do with him. Nicodemus is the model disciple who goes from the dark night of conversation to the bright light of that final Easter. The way that leads those who glimpse that light, who travel a similar journey to Nicodemus, out of a relative darkness, leads them to living more true, more truth, living more openly, not hiding in the darkness, but living plainly before the world, where their deeds will be done, as John says, in God, faithfully. Their belief will lead to action that reflect the belief. Fullness of life live before God is the gift if there is the gifted peace the gifted peace that comes when our in our living our words and deeds match you know what I mean when your words and deeds sort of cohere with integrity it brings a sense of peace when we're a bit disconnected we're saying one thing but doing another I think it upsets our inner peace. Living in the light brings peace. This God-gifted life is a journey ever deeper into the life of God and life with God. The journey from darkness to light, from the shadows to ever-increasing brightness. The earliest Christians were known as a community of people of the way, the way. Acts tells us repeatedly they were known as a people of the way. The Christian life is a pilgrimage, a way toward the light, founded on the one who said, I am the way. But I want to share with you the reality of our lives is that this is not a smooth path. This is not a nice smooth journey from darkness to light. Is it? There's ups and downs. The odd wrong turn here and there. Getting a little bit lost and finding our way back. We lose our way. We stumble and fall. We get distracted. But Christ is there. Always there, calling us on, pick ourselves up, shake off the dust and follow him along this better way of light, a good road. 
How does this work in practice? I wrote it here. <clears throat> An unknown woman who the world later turns out to be known to know as Rosa refuses to move from her seat on the bus. A bloke whose name I've forgotten, I looked it up once, in some American state, decided that he would walk around the athletics track and ask people to sponsor him. And he did that for 24 hours. And that became Relay for Life. This week, a Burmese nun and some other nuns got down on their knees in the street in Burma asking the aggressors to take her, not the protesters. I don't know if you saw that. Light shining in darkness. Someone must have said somewhere, people are going hungry in our neighbourhood. And what emerged was the neighbour's place and salt food. Light in the darkness. And a guy named Vincent waited his whole life to have a Prime Minister pour some sandy dirt into his hands and acknowledge his people had a, a historic connection to the land in WA. And my last example is Iris's daughter, whose name is Heather, Heather had this idea that she would, one advent, rather than take things out of an advent calendar, probably chocolate, she would put things in a box to create a big box, which is going to be heavy at the end of the day, of groceries that she would then give to a family that needed it at Christmas. Others in her church in Ballarat thought that was a good idea, so they came on board and a group of them did it the idea caught on and on over a short number of years. Over three years, it went from her idea, how many last year? 3,000 3, boxes last year, the reverse advent calendar of which we were a part. Light in the darkness. This is what we do. This is what we're called to do. Not because we're clever, but because the grace of God has touched us. It is grace that empowers the whole movement from darkness to light. As Ephesians has told us, we don't do works in order to boast. We do them because we are God's handiwork. We are created in Christ to do good works. This gift, this power of grace, leads always to changed lives. When grace touches us, the grace of God, grace bursts forth, breaks out in visible actions, works that always give God the glory. For they are works that spring from thanksgiving and humility they are fueled by a gift of God, a gift of new life, the gift of grace. So, this is us, people of God's grace in Christ, called to do good works, not for our self-congratulations, but because we are so thankful 
for the grace we have received. If we are struggling, I think we need to look up and see the light. The light that is shining day by day and to be drawn to that light. To look up to the one who was raised up for us. To look up and see the gift of grace given in love on the cross. To look up and step out on the way with fellow pilgrims who are seeking to be drawn by that light, even if we might lose it from time to time. This is our hope as a people of God, that we might walk in the light of Christ. That when we lose our way, we will be drawn again back, finding our way in step with Jesus, who calls us on. That as we find more secure steps on that God-given way of the cross, where word and action speak in harmony of the fullness of life in Christ, where sincerity, humility and truth and the grace of God are ever present. May we hear that call. Let's pray. Lord, we ask by your grace that you would lead us as a people of the light. Forgive us when we stumble in our darkness and we give you thanks that you are faithful in shining a light over our lives and across our world that people just like us are called again and again to live as people of your light. Lead us not just to speak, but to act as people of your light. And may we do so to give you all the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
as we respond to God's grace. I'll show you this that you mightn't have seen for a while. Our lives are signs of God's goodness. Our offering is our heartfelt response in gratitude. As we bring our offering in such a diverse number of ways in these days, we still pray our prayer of dedication whether online, giving of envelope. Let us pray. Generous God, may our lives and these gifts we bring be acceptable to you that we may go out and love in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our prayers of the people. This morning, there are words within this prayer that come from words for worship. We pray for our world, the people of Myanmar. We cry out with them, as your people in Egypt did so long ago. How long must we wait, O oh Lord? The people of Papua New Guinea, as they mourn the death of the father of their nation, Sir Michael Samari. May his memory help them to strive for a strong country where the cultural diversity of the 820 language groups across this small landmass are valued and accepted. And so, Lord, where there is violence, may peace be born. Where there is fear, may love abound. Where there is division, may understanding unfold. We pray for our communities the community which is the Uniting Church in Australia, our President, Dr Deirdre Palmer, and the President-elect, the Reverend Sharon Hollis, and the ongoing work seeking to change the status of Afghan and Sri Lankan asylum seekers. The community of Bacchus Marsh, as we begin to move beyond COVID, May we journey together to discern the needs of the Bacchus Marsh community and determine how we, we may reach out, connect and support the people and their needs. And so, Lord, where there is loneliness, may connections grow. Where there is sickness, may healing be found. Where there is grief, may compassion take hold. We pray for ourselves, for those amongst us who are grieving, ill or lonely. May we seek to make meaningful connections with these people. For Reverend David, may his strength be renewed day by day and may we look for ways we can encourage and support him. And so Lord, where there is timidity, may courage increase. Where there is doubt, may faith expand. Where there is anxiety, may trace, trust rise up. Our glorious God, your light shines throughout the earth. May we too be lights of your community, offering hope and community in all things, O oh God. May your light and love be found. Amen. And now let's say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins 
as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. just a short while I'll share a word of blessing and we're going to sing a final song which is a praise and thanksgiving song sing praise and thanksgiving let all creatures living that's going to conclude our worship um, but we will go straight into our annual meeting but I know that some will get away to other commitments they may have uh, so you are free to do that but uh, we do encourage you to stay for our short annual meeting we do it it's an important one in some sense, in many senses, it's an important meeting. Um, but uh, we'll see how we go. Um, I don't know how I've done for time, but we'll see how we go. I invite you to stand. Let's stand. Friends, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Go in peace as children of the light. And let your light so shine before the world that they may see your good works and give glory to our God who is in heaven. And may the blessing of that God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Sing praise.